Ahoy everyone, this is David Perry and my continuing series of online interviews with very special people working during what I like to call the Great Pause, headed into the Great Return. And today, I'm greatly honored to be speaking to a dear friend and colleague, an artist whose work I'm sure you've seen. She's famous for painting famous people in San Francisco, including many mayors, including the upcoming official portrait of San Francisco Mayor London Breed, the one and only Elaine Bagley Arnoux. Elaine, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I have enough energy to carry on. <laughs> well, you know, I, I never tell or uh, uh, give an example of a lady's age, but let's just say that uh, you've been painting for a very long time. A very long time. <clears throat> it's all right if you tell them how old I am. It doesn't matter to me. Well, why don't, why don't you do it, since I won't say it. I'm prohibited from it. All right. <laughs> At the, at the last count, I was 94 years old. So we can say, and I, I like this better, yeah. I'm going into the 95th year. There you go, or your 10th decade of work. Yes, well, that's probably even more important. <laughs> so yes. you are, have become known for painting uh, well-known San Franciscans, iconic personalities. I have two of your books, people like Willie Brown, Senator Feinstein, uh, uh, the famous activists uh, who, who, have, who has graced our political life over the last few decades. And now you've painted the official portrait of San Francisco Mayor London Reed. Before we talk about your latest project, what was it like sitting with and painting London Breed. And of course, this all transpired before COVID. Well, it was, it, I have to say it was quite exciting because walking into City Hall is not just terrible, you know. And then we found this area, my son and I, where she could sit and we could look through her almost to the other side of the building. And the uh, decorations were so interesting that she wanted to have the lion be a part of her painting that was on the one of the railings. And I thought, can I really do that? <laughs> can I really do that? But it was it was just a thrilling thing because the build, building in and of itself is is amazing. And then she was so loose and so open. And it was refreshing, all of it. I've so seen... I can say that that part has not diminished at all. It's still there. Yes. Now, of course, uh, not too long ago, my husband Alfredo and I visited you in your wonderful studio in San Francisco and saw the initial sketches and uh, the work of, uh, that you have done portraying Mayor London Breed. So we're not gonna show that now because that's a surprise, but I know you've been working on it. And I was, I was inspired by how intimate it was. And, and, and especially now during this historic period, Mayor Breed has become quite a heroine to many people for her leadership battling COVID. But besides going through a pandemic, we have gone through quite a racial reckoning this summer in the United States. And you have painted many figures before. You have painted Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You have painted many pieces that were political and social in nature. But this summer, you were also moved to paint something else that is very timely. I'd like to talk about that now. I believe you call it the kneeling figure inspired by Colin Kaepernick. Talk to me about that work, and then in a second, we're gonna actually take a look at the sculpture in process now in your studio. Well, you know, I started the work with Colin Kaepernick about four years ago, uh, because I was very moved by what he did in kneeling. And there was a hue and cry around the country oh, that's terrible, and then somebody would say, oh, that's great, and <clears throat> so it began to work its way into my psyche, and I just decided I had to include him in my, with my people series, although I didn't put it any place. Um, <clears throat> but it resonated with me, what he did, despite the hue and the cry. 
So that when the Black Lives Matter really tore itself up, which was so good, immediately this image of him came back to me. And I decided to, in, in just a moment, I decided that I must do him. And uh, you know, it's, it's really very thrilling for that to reoccur because oftentimes artists have ideas about, oh yes, I'll do this, I'll do that, and it washes away. But with me, somehow these things stick. And this really did stick. So that now um, I'm passionate about it. I'm grateful to him for having the courage to do this. I'm also grateful to all the people who were so upset about Black Lives Matter. I was so upset by that. And I was so happy that the, the forces are coming together. And I guess the kneeling figure is an example of the forces that are on the ground. Thank goodness. Have you ever met Colin? Never. Would you like to? Sure, I would, yeah. I think it would be quite incredible to have him come to your studio and, and, and see this piece that was inspired by <laughs> his act. I think it would be a lot of fun. Well, I'll try My to... The studio is quite delightful, and I think he would really enjoy it. Yeah, well, I've seen your studio. It is quite delightful. Is, <laughs> what, what, what made you think that this would be better a sculpture than a painting? Because I know many people know of your work through the books and know you as a, a painter but I think less people are aware of your really incredible constructions and sculptures, some of them quite edgy in a whimsical sort of way. <laughs> well, originally they were from my Mother Goose book, The Little Characters, and they were fun. But then as I moved along, as I think I mentioned, into the deeper part of the darkness, um, it just, occurred to me that the depth of him is what I had to do in three dimensions. Um, sure, I, I would love to do a painting of it, but it's going to be in bronze and it is my first major piece. And I find this not only challenging, but thrilling that I have been able to put this as a period to my age. So th you, this will be your first major piece in bronze, you mean to say? Yes. And it's being yes. executed by uh, people we know well, Tom Shrey and Musi Artworks of Berkeley. I know them well as the co-founder of the Rainbow Honor Walk in San Francisco, the world's first LGBT walk of fame. All bronze plaques on the sidewalks of Castro and Tom and the great team at, uh, at Musi Artworks produced it. So I'm, I'm glad to see we're still giving them work over there. That's great. Before we take a look at where the sculpture is now, what is the process behind creating a bronze sculpture? And what part of that process are we in now? And how long before we see the finished piece? Well, it's in, it's in a, a good stage at this point because you can really see the form. Until you see the form, it's nebulous, right? So Victoria uh, Grace, my assistant, <coughs> has done this uh, working with armatures for me, all oh, for maybe 10 years. And so here we are at the climax. <laughs> and it's, it's really a wonderful process in that you have to think, I mean think, and see the form moving. When you see the form moving, then you can put in, then you can actually direct it. <clears throat> And so at this point, the direction is there. And now some of the paper mache is going on to, full, to fill out the legs, the arms, whatever. And uh, after Victoria puts a skim of paper mache on the figure, then I get to come in <laughs> and fill it out. <laughs> And I'm very excited about it. And then, of course, uh, Tom 
will come along and he'll take the big piece, uh, small piece away because it's only two feet high and <clears throat> take it over to the foundry and they will do their magic. And after a while, it will become five feet. Well, this is great. So let's take a sneak preview now. I know your camera person, Holly, your daughter, thank you for your efforts, Holly, is now going to- You're welcome. And you're welcome, is gonna help us. We're gonna take a look Victoria. at this sculpture based on an inspired no, by Colin Kaepernick kneeling. So uh, Victoria, can you uh, talk to us a little bit about what you're doing and what is the process you're involved in now? Well, I've made a skeleton of, of wood and then I'm and chicken wire on top of that to get it some shape. And then I wrapped a fiberglass cloth tape around that. And now I'm applying paper mache mix. And I'm going to build up the, the shape of the body from paper mache closer, to, closer to where Elaine is going to, to start the clay. And how long a process is this, your, your specific part in it? How long would you work on this before it goes to the foundry or before uh, Elaine conducts the next piece of her? Probably two weeks. Bronze? A couple of weeks. So in hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, something like that? Yeah. Really quite incredible. Holly, let's turn back to your mom now. Isn't that fun? <laughs> I mean, already he's got his hand out. By the way, the, um, the man who has posed for this piece is our concierge at our building where we live. <clears throat> and he's very well known and people love him. And he is African American and he's, he and his wife are very involved in Black Lives Matter. So it's, it's very meaningful, this whole thing. It's, should I say it's the most meaningful piece of my work in my lifetime? I don't know. Well, but I feel so deeply about it. The process of creating a sculpture, I think, is much more complex and in-depth and nuanced and emotional, if I may, than most people realize. It's you. Uh, it's Victoria there working on it. It's the inspiration of Colin and Black Lives Matter, and then you actually have a model uh, who, who Yes, I do. Do you wear a football uniform or? <laughs> Pardon me? Did your model <laughs> wear a football uniform? How, you know, how, how authentic was this posing? Oh, very, 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 very. Um, <laughs> sometimes he would pose in the lobby or in the hall of the building until we got it right, you know? But he's very, very empathetic. And it's, it's just a thrilling thing for me to have moved through all of this to this particular period. Well, I really thank you for talking to us today. I understand that next week we'll actually see the next stage of the process when Tom Stray from Musee Artworks comes over. So we'll have Tom on camera. And I believe this is a big day for you. You've done many interviews before, but this is your first experience on Zoom, correct? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, necessity is the mother of invention. So there you go. <laughs> I hope I'm behaving like myself. <laughs> any closing thoughts you'd like to leave our audience with about your work in general, or specifically this sculpture? And, and this moment we find ourselves, I mean, uh, I hope you take this the way in which it's meant. You've seen a lot of history. Um, have you ever known of a moment like this summer, the combination of COVID, uh, Black Lives Matter, the racial reckoning we're going through, the, the current political climate, which I know you've had many, many sharply uh, provocative pieces about, uh, the president whose name I shall not mention. Have you ever seen or worked in a period like this? Never. Um, really, it, that, that is appropriate for me to talk about my age at this moment because, you know, I've experienced so much. The, 
World War and um, the, um, I would have to say the Holocaust, which came into this. There have been so many political movements that have been difficult. However, the disarray of our country in regards to racism is some very large, almost undoable thing. But we are going to, we're working at it now. And this is what's so thrilling is that I have an opportunity at this late date to be amongst the most exciting periods of the United States. Well, thank you, Elena. I don't mean this is blowing smoke. You're certainly one of the youngest, most energetic artists I've ever known, and I've worked with a bunch of them, but no one likes you. <laughs> You're generous. <laughs> thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you thank so you. much. Please thank Victoria, Holly. Thank you for your time. I also send greetings from welcome. my husband and better half. Thank you, Earth. David. And we look forward to being with you in studio soon, and we'll talk to you next week when Tom is there on site. Ahoy. You're a wonderful spirit. <laughs>